Some people say that our food supply is at risk due to chemicals, corporate farming, and GMOs. Some people say they were using up our natural resources and not replenishing the land. But the people that grow the food, the people that work the land, these are the people who are fighting for a sustainable agriculture system, one that replenishes the earth and will provide food for the future. These are the faces of modern agriculture. And this is the story of how these farmers are using new innovation and technology to produce better soybean crops and preserve the land for the next generations. In trying to reach sustainability, we need enough food supply. And to do that, we need productivity. And there's only so many people willing to produce our food. In fact, farming has had to adapt, with the number of family farms declining at the same time that the demand for agricultural products has increased. Today's family farm has incorporated automation, improved crop varieties, and new techniques to keep up with the demand. That's why finding a four bean pod is intriguing. You see, soybeans generally show up with two to three beans to a pod. Every once in a while, you'll see one with four beans. For the farmer, it's a good sign of a healthy, high-producing crop. And that, ultimately, is what these farmers are working toward. Join the Food Channel as we introduce you to the people, the land, the technology, and, of course, the food. We'll take you to four family farms where soybeans are grown. You'll hear from the growers and the agronomists. We'll talk with a weed scientist, a nutritionist, a dietitian, and we'll get the scoop on one of the world's biggest food products, the soybean. Each morning, the sun comes up over soybean fields across America, bringing with it another day in the fields, another day of watching the sky, another day of working tirelessly until the sun goes down. This is where your food is made, on a family farm. This is where generations of farmers have committed their lives to planting, nurturing, and harvesting. These people are part of less than 1% of the United States population who claim farming is their occupation. And these are the farmers of our story. I've always known I wanted to farm. Um, from the time I was small, my dad farmed and my granddad farmed, and I've always known that I wanted to be a farmer. I grew up around my dad helping at a very early age, uh, operating machinery, milking cows, taking care of uh, all sorts of babies. I grew up on a very diversified farm. My responsibility uh, growing up was to take care of a lot of these things, and I truly loved it. Three generations on that side, five generations on my mother's side. I'm, I'm a fifth generation. It's always been in my blood. It's all I've ever wanted to do. It's fun. It's exciting. Um, it, it just to be to grow a crop, to have the sensation of growing a crop, feeding people, and it's just it's it's a lot of fun. My great grandfather homesteaded this in 1878. You know, I guess I've been doing it for you know. 40 years, you know, you kind of get accustomed to it. Every day is different, but that's great. That's one thing that's nice about being a farmer. It's not monotonous. <laughs> I've always felt it important to be involved in what, in what you do, whether it's, whether it's a hobby or whether it's what you make a living doing. And I also felt like agriculture was an area that I could be involved. There's just something about putting a tiny seed into the ground and watching it grow. That's what makes these farmers come alive. And these farmers have all chosen to grow soybeans, making them part of a crop that is considered the world's foremost provider of protein and oil. In fact, out of the nearly one million farmers in the United States today, close to two-thirds of them grow soy. The soybean is a legume, related to clover, peas, and alfalfa. The bean originally came from China, and the crop is now grown in more than 30 states across America and exported all over the world. As you can assume, farming follows the seasons. We start the year, I guess, I guess you could say we start the year planting. I mean, springtime, I guess, is the start of our year. And you, and you go through all of those uh, emotional roller coasters with weather and markets and, I guess, regulations to a degree. And, you know, at the end, you have harvest. I just can't imagine anything that would be as rewarding as, as, growing, as growing our nation's food supply and the world's. I just I can't, I can't think of another thing that would be that, as rewarding as that. When it comes to the soybean, its many uses make it a crop that serves a lot of purposes and a lot of people. 
We utilize every bit of that bead uh, for various uses. You know, we use it for human growth and development, livestock growth and development, some of it in pharmaceutical and cosmetic industry as well. So it's, it's just a crop that we utilize to the fullest. Farming isn't a life you choose, it chooses you. My dad and I, uh, well first of all, he was my best friend. And ever since I was probably three years old, um, always wanted to go with him. It's, uh, it's pretty neat for me to have a son now that keeps on talking about daddy's truck and wants to go with me because that's the way I was. There's a lot of history in farming, particularly when generation after generation farm the same fields. My son loves to go with me and be with me on the farm, and I try to make that always acceptable when he wants to. Um, and I always take that time, no matter how busy I am, no matter how many times my cell phone goes off, I try to make sure I've got time for him. So I, that's one of the neat things about it. And how many jobs in the world can your family be part of your life on the job? Your kids learn life lessons that they can carry, they can carry throughout the rest of their life. I know I did, you know, I mean, I have a, I think I have a really good work ethic. I think I have a, a really strong value system. Yes, these are families on family farms and operating family-owned businesses, facing daily challenges in order to stay in the game. We are fortunate enough to have two young sons that are farming here. At my age, the, the challenge is hopefully I've got enough time on earth here to make sure that my, my family is successful at this business. If I can give them a nudge and, and help them get dug in, shall we say, and that sort of thing, I, I will feel that I'm a success. I don't need the big car, the new home, or the boat. But if I can uh, watch my family grow and thrive, I'm, I'm very content. Of course, we can't forget that farming is a business where routine is easily overturned when the sky turns gray. The farmers have developed their own philosophical viewpoints in order to make it through the ups and downs, and they keep their daily planners in pencil since Mother Nature is ultimately in charge. When you get up in the morning and you go outside, um, you don't know what the typical day is going to be like. You know, you, uh, you lay awake at night when that thunderstorm rolls in and you hope there's not hail in it. And you, you know, you, you, you hope that it's not really heavy rain. You hope you don't have wind. Mother Nature's in charge, so uh, we have to uh, deal with what she dishes out. Sometimes she's very kind and sometimes uh, she's not so kind. But uh, we kind of know that in this business, so you... Uh, you accept what you get, and uh, when everything works out very well, we're very, very thankful. And uh, if it doesn't work out so well, we, we always say there's always next year. You have your good times and your bad, and, and you just, you know, have an understanding banker if your times are bad and, and all, and you just uh, keep moving ahead. That's one thing about farmers. They're usually optimistic that, you know, we're going to have a better year next year. These are the farmers and their parents, wives, children, and grandchildren, who have a multitude of scientists, nutritionists, and researchers behind them to help them keep up with the production needs. These are the people who nurture the soybean so that it can grow. These are the people who, day after day, work to plant, cultivate, and harvest so that our food supply is ample and safe for generations to come. These are the people behind modern agriculture. These are the faces of farming. Join us for part two as we take a look at the face of the land. How has farming changed? Is the land in danger? Are these farmers and others doing enough to create substantial conservation practices? And we'll continue our search for the four bean pod, that higher yield that signifies healthy crops and a healthy future.